Uh, I guess it's time. Yeah, let's do it. Thank you for your patience. Thanks a lot. Is this tooth and tail, says Natasha. Holy. On the ball. Let's go. Oh, one second. My volume's freaking... There we go. Yeah, tooth and tail. Oh, no. I want to hear the... Uh... Yeah, all these intros are so fun. We all challenu, we all kill Vinhawk. Means we are tyranny, we are common folk. Yeah, this is a fun game we worked on. I was just uh, I was talking to Austin recently, so I thought I'd just listen to the tunes again. You know, had in a while. Um. Yeah, we, uh, we actually made this whole language for the game, and, uh, the, our players actually, like, figured it out, and there was a whole, there's a channel on the Discord for the game, or for the developer, that required people to speak in the language, like, on the Discord. <laughs> it's crazy. Players are nuts, always. Like the, the hardcore passionate ones just always surprise you every time. It's crazy. And yeah, it's based on it's based on Slavic languages like Russian. Yeah. But it has it's not really a lang it, yeah, it's not legitimately a language. It's more like a phonetic phonetic cipher. So like consonant sounds and vowel sounds, some would change to other consonant sounds, some would stay the same. Some vowels change other vowels, some would say the same, that kind of thing. And then there were uh, a bunch of kind of side rules because we had to take into account we were hiring North American voice talent. So it was it was developed, the, the, the language approach was developed both from a standpoint of does it sound interesting and also can it be performed and read? Because the idea was it was meant to be this kind of meta puzzle for players to figure out. Because it wasn't written anywhere in the game. It's written nowhere. I mean, it, it's kind of written in Morse code in like one cheeky part of the game. But it's also not meant to be uh, analyzed or or parsed by most players, obviously. Um, yeah, so it was like an audio-only puzzle. So if you start listening to what the various characters in the game are saying, you can start making out kind of what things might mean. If that makes sense. I think it makes sense. Uh I have some files here. One second. Let me let me grab something. Cause yeah, it was fun. It was a fun time for sure. The uh I'll just got some I did for like uh 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 Idling. Sure use some idling lines, I guess. One second, I'll pull it in Pro Tools. Some idols, please. Here we go. Uh, these will be loud as. Pull them down, please. Okay, like 7 dB? Sure. Here's some stuff, check it out. Uh, your piège has wait. What did I say? Your piège has shagging. Oh. Vo? Yo? I can't recall what I said. <laughs> Your piège has shagging. Piège. What is that? Face? Piège? I can't recall. Ugh. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. But anyways, yeah. Bottom line, they figured it out. It's crazy. In the end, they all figured it out, and. They actually held like a poetry contest and people had to They like wrote poetry on the thing One second, I think I have this This is like memory lane right now Uh, That's not gonna work 
Oh well, it's fine. It's fine. No sweat. <laughs> Moving on. Thank you, Austin, for your time. Uh, oh, I do want to show something as well. I just have like the offline file here, so I'll just, I'll just use this. But uh... awesome. Pause. Um, yeah, Subnautica Below Zero. A little trailer got thrown out there, so let me just play this. Let's do this. Go full screen. Mm. Once I was falling asleep. Mm. This work? Yeah. fun huh uh yeah that's some uh oh back to here again i never used that full screen display there we go <laughs> that's like the first time using that in years probably uh yeah some claps for craig barnes on our team holding it down did a lot of good work with the of course support from the team and such but that was definitely a a craig show in a big way um yeah really excited it's coming out soon finally it's been a long time uh okay so Welcome everyone in. Justin, good to see you. Natasha, nice job on that call it a tooth and tail. I'm actually, I'm actually really impressed. <laughs> I'm really impressed you nailed that. Uh, Bradley. There you are. And Edward too. Both y'all both of y'all are in here. I'm glad to see that. Um, Mate, Ben George, Ezekiel, Turi makes music. Uh, Shagans. Shagans? That seems vaguely familiar. Shagans. You been here before? Maybe. Sean Laval. Um, good to see you, man. Good to see you again, as always. Uh, well, this is a little show called Real Talk. You might be aware. <laughs> you might be aware. I'm sure you've all, uh, uh, you're all fully understanding what you've tuned in for. So, um, we're doing some game audio demo reel review stuff today. So we're looking at Edward Durkin. Durkin? Durkan? Is it Ken or Can? Let me know. Durkan? I don't know. Uh, been here a couple of times. Shagans. Sweet. We're welcome back. Uh, yeah, we're looking at this stuff down here. There it is. <laughs> Close one. Yeah, we're can. Dirk can. Thank you. All right. Uh, looking at presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinction for presentation. And we're looking at the site on the whole and general what is being shoved in our face as far as important information. And uh, if I want to see certain things, are those things here to see? Is there too much info? Is there not enough info? That kind of thing. And for the reel itself, the demo reel, we got one 
at the forefront for both these pages. It's like Bradley and Edward have watched this show or something. It's very possible. Uh, for the real, we'll see how long the thing is, how it how it flows, the smoothness and perhaps creativity of transitions and that kind of thing. All the info in there, the titling, just yeah, everything besides the audio itself, basically. And for the material selection, we're looking at things in the reel and in the, is there a portfolio here? We'll see, I guess, music and sound design. Yeah, like various stuff here, these things and and these things maybe. And what those things might suggest to someone coming in blind uh, about what Edward or Bradley wants to be working on in the future. And what their skill sets look like and what their uh, work history might look like. And then for content quality, just is it good? Is this, does the stuff sound sweet? And if there's room to improve uh, myself, I will be happy to let you know what I think. And I'm sure folks in the chat will be calling things out helpfully, as always. And finally, distinction. Are you standing out in some positive way and making a solid first positive impression? As there are a whole lot of people like you who also want those jobs. And this show is really not about like getting you hired specifically. It's more, it's more specifically about increasing the odds that you are hired. That's kind of the, the gist. As all these things we're, we're always pushing people to towards doing, like making you know smooth and concise demo reels. Like, yeah, you could probably have a longer demo reel and still get hired. It's possible. It's not like we have the formula. But yeah, the idea is we're just trying to give you pluses wherever we can so that hopefully all the pluses you have are the most pluses of any candidate. That's the idea, at least. So, uh, without further ado, shall we? Um, welcome on in. Let's have a look at... Who's the first in the chat? Can I see? Uh, we have Edward saying, this music excites me. So I guess you win the prize of, uh, of going first, Edward. You've religiously watched this show. Well, this show is far from religion, but I'm... I'm glad to hear that. I mean, hopefully you've learned something. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Um, uh, it's it's certainly th there. There certainly have been some folks who have like hit me on the side in the past who were like, "Yo, I love real talk. Can you please read my read my stuff?" And I'll look at it and be like, "This is like a SoundCloud page. <laughs> like, it's not." Have you watched Real Talk? Have you actually? I'm not sure you have. <laughs> so. uh I suppose we'll see. We'll see, Edward. Um, I'm I'm optimistic. We'll put it that way. Uh, this is a this is a vertical page. It looks like we got about scrolls down for us. Music scrolls down for us. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So I guess we'll go about first, shall we? Excuse me. So uh, about. Thanks for. Is this big enough? By the way, maybe go a little larger yet. Like two hundred. Sure. Um, about Edward, thanks for dropping by. How kind. I'm a composer and sound designer for games currently based in London, UK. My introduction to the world of audio was through the classical guitar. I soon joined metal bands. That's a pretty hard shift. And would later go on tours around Europe. Nice. Graduating with a first in sound art and design BA at the Lon London College of Communication. Uh, UAL lead led to sound design and composing for feature films and games. I began working at the soundtrack creation studios in London uh, and worked on award-winning feature films to music production commissions. What? Oh, I see. Our on things ranging from this to this. That's what, that's what you mean, right? Cause that kind of threw me off there. Just a heads up. Uh, yes. On projects ranging from, this to this is probably a little clearer recently came third in the berlin international sound design competition 2020 hey nice good job i don't know what the what the field was like in that competition but i guess we can see perhaps uh various contests you see, you're obviously active that's cool to see and as far as things you've done that's awesome too favorites oh classic the classic josh adam bell list of games you like very nice um okay so but the sush, very nice. Uh, yeah, very, very AAA. Nice. Okay, so we got recording gear, some things. We got a DAW. We got some things here. Middleware. 
some things. No F mod, huh? Y is all the way. Uh, and UE4. Cool. Okay, and this... So let me just browse a page. I, I'm a bit thrown off by there being things here and then also more things down below. I guess because these are maybe like your most relevant things or something in terms of portfolio pieces. Uh, maybe? I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't mean to say that like FMOD is a need. You don't have to be getting into FMOD. Uh, it's just, yeah, very, very commonly you'll see both. That's all. It's not the most common thing to see like only FMOD or only wise. <clears throat> but... Yeah, it can't, it can't possibly hurt, basically. You know, the more things you learn, the better perspective you'll have globally of kind of what's possible and, and uh, all that. Okay, so we have the reel. We got some redesigns, Godfall trailer. I've been seeing this a bunch lately, the Godfall redesign. It's becoming the new Assassin's Creed redesign. Uh, Ratchet and Clank redesign, some Wise and UE4 stuff. Cool to see. And we got down below... Music and sound design. Okay, we got uh, a thing. Third prize. Oh, here's the winner. Or the third prize winner. Nice. And then below that, we got Symphobia 4 Pandora redesign, Wrapped redesign, Hungry Days redesign. And, okay, so oh, for more work, follow YouTube. Let's open YouTube. I'm curious. Uh, okay. Oh, no. Too, too soon. Not yet. And so there's a couple more. Like the, your sound effect stuff's here. Okay, cool. Great. Uh, I also realized Google's Chrome is like way low. There we go. All right. So testimonials also. Are there more than one? Edward is an excellent music composer and sound effects designer, but perhaps what stands out most is he has an undeniable winning attitude. It does go a long way in the game industry, for sure. It's a people industry. The kind that makes a person excel in their profession and the kind where everyone around him benefits from his example. How nice. As the executive producer, I collaborated with Edward closely for music compositions and sound effects on my mobile game project. He worked with me patiently and positively through many iterations to see that my, my vision was brought to life the way I wanted. The result is a big success, as it always is and can only be when working with great people like Edward. This is a shining testimonial. Very nice. Very nice. So, little level go. Is that in here, though? Perhaps we'll see in the reel. We'll see. I'm eager to hear this stuff. A lot of things here. Uh, okay, we're all cranked up. I'll turn my side chain off. There we go. I should chain over here, too. There we go. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Full volume. Get out of here. 113. All right, pushing it. We'll see how we do. Oh, it never shipped in the end. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, that's too bad. Well, game dev, right? Let's go. Oh, it's, it's embedded, that's why. Okay. <laughs> the embedding freaked out. Nice work. Very nice. Very nice. Um, okay, first impression wise, like the intro. I think the length was tolerable because the content was good. Uh, however, towards the end, I feel like I was being yanked around a little bit. 
just the the, the rapidity. Is that a word? Rapidness? <laughs> With how rapid it was going from clip to clip, mainly from the uh, after Ratchet into the action RPG stuff. A little bit. It seemed like you were trying to ham fist some stuff in there. Um, yeah. Strong work, though. Really nice. That's fun to listen to. I'm not surprised. Uh, let's press play again. Let's talk presentation stuff. So lengthwise, I mean, yeah, we'll see. So intro, intro was nice. I liked it. Uh, you did the classic Tzvi. Did you watch uh, Tzvi's um, reel? Is that why you did the 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 fade, the half fade on the titling? Because it's sweet. I love it. I'm I'm down with this trend. <laughs> Super down with it. Yeah, you watched that one. There you go. Very nice. Transient gamers. Where's transient gamers at right now? You in the chat? I like this clip. It's super verby, but I like the clip. Uh, Demon Souls. How's the transition? Your transitions seem pretty, pretty, uh, like intentional. You know, it seems like you did some it seems like you made an audio track for your entire reel as opposed to hey i have some uh some clips and like they're they're back to back and we're done kind of thing um the difference for example is like doing the audio in a in a program like premiere or final cut versus doing the audio in like a daw for the entire clip and it seems like you did it in a DAW. That's that's my suspicion, given the 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 J cuts and stuff. So let's watch the transition, though. Sure, fine. Uh, and then this one was like the head slide into the. They're separate in Final Cut. Tight tight uh, crossfades. Cool. Okay. Wasn't there a J cut on like the rally thing though? We'll get there. Yeah. Even there, there was, too. Yeah, that one, this transition kind of threw me a bit because the sound coming in, like, no offense, it's definitely... This is like the the wise implementation thing. I don't think this is the strongest sounding thing in the reel. And it's very kind of unchanging. It's like, right? Just is that that tone we, when we come in. So that for a J cut, I was like, whoa, what does that sound? Um, as opposed to being like, oh, what's coming up next? You know, ideally with a hearing the audio first before the next clip, you want to be like kind of interest peaked. But that was just a little bit of a jarring sound compared to uh, this clip, which was awesome, by the way. It sounded really good. Um, again, let's play it one more time. Yeah, it's a, it's a very nitpicky thing, but on uh, I, with this show in general, I try my best to kind of like be over here like watching myself as I'm watching it for things like that, where I'm like, oh, and I just kind of acknowledge that I was jarred at that moment, just so I can kind of come back and... and Talk about that, right? So, yeah, really s small thing. Um, I might even just fade this with the video in this case. Like, don't J-cut it, and it's probably going to be better. Like, I blow at eight at engines <laughs> like, i'm really bad so i can't i can't give you a hard time with that i'm very bad at like i just have no experience with with like car engines and stuff it's not really my my forte <laughs> right so that clip too so we'll go from the rally racing into <laughs> like that the this like, is this a cut? It's a cut, right? Yeah, it's, it's for sure a cut into a different part of gameplay. So this here felt really fast. Because look at this. We got this finishes at... So I'm going to sidechain again. Um, 
this finishes at like 55 seconds ish 55 we're into action rpg and two and a half seconds later we're changing clips so um yeah compared to the length of everything else so far we have this godfall design which is like five seconds to uh yeah it's like 18 seconds ish so two seconds is really quick and i did feel like i mean it's it's this tricky thing edward because of course you know all this content so this goes for like actually developing commercial projects too uh, very commonly with voiceover actually so we have let's say you're futzing some voiceover or you're doing um like a mix for a trailer or something there's like narration uh the the trick there is that yeah you become really familiar with the content like you know what the voiceover is saying and now you have this you know bang and music track and also this like action sfx track and you're trying to make sure the vo is intelligible so you're like, oh, I can tell what it's saying, but you also know what it's saying already, right? So the idea of saying, well, can someone watching it through the first time hear every word is a, it's a tricky thing to keep in mind sometimes, like to, to force yourself into this kind of state of objectivity and think, is, the, is, it, is it actually audible and intelligible? And it's a similar concept for something like this because you know this content, you know what's coming up next, but for someone who's watching through for, for the first time, it's, it's, important to keep in mind like can they keep track of what's happening like when i bring in a new clip can they get kind of like grounded again say okay okay cool this is like an arc action rpg thing because keep in mind i press play here in this moment i have no idea what this is and i've never seen it before right so it's it's a it's a small well it's not small it's a pretty serious consideration to think like is there enough time here for a viewer coming in fresh to like get rooted and be able to interpret and parse all this information I'm throwing at them, like this audio and text and so forth. Can they parse it in a meaningful way, like in a, in a solid and rooted and like internalizing way? Like, are they going to recall this thing once it's done? And this clip played and I was like, okay. And I began reading this and then it was gone. Like, <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, it's almost like, we don't talk about this specifically on real talk too often, but when you're thinking about your, your thinking about your, uh, your titling and stuff, I almost consider like, have you given the viewer time to like, look at this and then get back in the scene again, you know, cause this should be really quick and to the point and then we're in. So I almost recommend like a two second kind of like intro to each clip. It's still interesting orally but yeah it just gives you some time to again get grounded kind of learn where we are and yes wise i was gonna say that too josh so you're not you're not alone in this nitpick uh yeah it can be helpful it can be a nice detail to make sure that the tools and games and companies and all those things have their their uh, like their word mark kind of formatting correct as far as what is capitalized and what is not Things like power up audio is three words. You know, people use two words occasionally and it's like capital P, capital A only. And I'm like, ugh, just a small kind of like, damn, not quite right, you know. Uh, okay, moving on to... Yeah, and the end confused me also. Do you recall that? I was like, oh, it's done. So having something that resembles the bookend of the front might be nice, even if it's like a smaller, you know, abridged version, just like this only, just like fade in and fade out, not the end of the world, just as a, the story is over kind of thing, because right now we just sort of fall off a cliff. Uh, okay, so as far as length goes, I mean... Uh, let's watch one more time. I'm curious where you can where you can make some cuts if you even need to. So I think it's a pretty strong intro. 
I like it. In the first, I mean, we always say in the first 10 seconds, make you want to hear more, and you've accomplished this, so good job. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Uh, you cut the intro logo at the end. Yeah, I mean, I can see how you might want to cut there, but I think it's it's important to have a finish. You know, it's over now kind of moment. These are great clips, honestly. Like, my notes for you are super nitpicky. We'll get to that in a second, but... Like, that's... I think what you can... I know, I know what you're doing. You're saying, hey, here's my awesome sound design work in these redesigns. Pretty sick, right? And like, yeah, great, great work. Very nice. Uh, and then at the end, you're saying, oh, and also, I do wise things, right? And UE4 things. Makes sense, totally. I think that you could probably get away with, because we're at 50 seconds right now, geez, yeah, 48. Um, I don't know that you need all this stuff in here because if you're, like showing anything like this is going to be an indication you're doing things like this, you know? Uh, I do like this a bunch, though. It's cool. The, the thing is, I, I don't mind your reel being a bit longer. I don't think it's the end of the world. Like I was saying, this at 1.13 is probably okay. The action RPG clip feels like it's it could be better as far as just choosing a better clip that is a single clip. Um, and the... I mean, the, th the thing is, these are also different, right? We have this like first-person thing, and we have this third-person thing and a racing thing. Like, this is all super different games. So I do think that they're not like, you aren't being redundant, you know, which is awesome. This clip can probably be shorter and just think of it being like a quick peppering, like do this thing, do this thing, do this thing. And uh, yeah, it, this one could probably be a little bit shorter because it's, it's very like, voice heavy, right? Stay low and listen carefully. You see that red arrow across the street? I mean, it's it's not like that sexy of a clip. I like the intro, the good one. It's nice. Um, and I guess you're looking to show voice processing stuff, and also where it's coming from. Stay low and listen carefully. You see that red arrow? It's just 2D, right? So, uh, yeah. I'm just curious what you're looking to show, like what your thoughts for each clip were. Like the things you're, I mean, apart from like, hey, I've done, a lot, I've done several things. Pretty cool, right? It is cool. Super valuable. Awesome. Um, but yeah, the uh, being this mostly voice. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I feel like you could probably cut to black or to your logo and like keep the voice going a little bit. Listen carefully. You see that red arrow across the street? Go. You know, I mean, it's... The voice processing is kind of fine. Like, it's not super special. It's just like a, you know, pretty basic futz, radio futz. So I don't know that the voice being, like, the last thing you hear is really doing you favors. But the clip on the whole is super cool. So I want to learn more. Like, what is this thing? You know, like, it looks, it looks very pretty. So is there more to learn? Let's see. Let's go. 11 minutes. Let's go. You talking to me? Hello, my name is Edward Durkin. In today's video, I'll be using Wise and Unreal Engine to create a simple location-based music system. I'm using a level design that I found on the YouTube channel Unreal Environments Speed Level Design, named City16. It was created using free assets on the Epic Games Marketplace. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So... So UE4, City16 UE4, this is like a UE4 downloadable project because that might be worth putting like demo, demo game level map world something, like something like that here because this alone 
is maybe just like one word too few. Because I wasn't sure if this was like your personal project you made in UE4 or like it was some modding friends or something like that. Um, just having... Because, yeah, we've seen like the first person shooter demo level so many times. I have not seen this one. So knowing that it's a demo level thing would be very helpful. This one here, also UE4, is probably helpful as well. Um, and this one, demo level as well. I mean, I, I assume these are all demos now. But that's not something I was like actively considering. Um, excuse me, in the moment, you know. Because I, I just didn't know. I have no idea what this thing is. Okay, so yeah, cool. You have this though, um, and you're narrating, and I can tell what you're saying, and you sound good. And very kindly, they put it up for free download. I'll link in the description for anyone interested. This was one of my first Wise and Unreal Engine projects, so I thought I'd jump in and do a full sound design, music, and dialogue implementation to get practicing. Yeah, awesome, super cool. Uh, okay, and I assume you talked to this one too. Eight minutes. Hello, welcome to my vehicle audio walk. Edward. Edward. Good. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's... Watch your, your winner, your third place winner. I'm curious, this is... Four minutes long. So long. I'll watch some. We'll watch some. Lots of little articulations and stuff. Where'd it go? It's gone. Here it is. <laughs> Jeez, thanks, Paige. Uh, yeah, cool. Let's go back to your reel here and talk about some... Um, content stuff. It's very obvious you're on AAA, your game preferences and the selections, it's very obviously looking for a larger uh, studio gig. So, um, content. The, I'm going to go sidechain again. So, the first thing that I acknowledge big time was the reverb in this space is crazy. It is crazy. I also heard that sound on the break. I think so. I'm pretty certain there's like that classic sound ideas stone break sound in there, and I, I, yeah, it's fine. It just has that. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost. I, I would bet some money on that. Probably that there's that sound in there because it's just, it's very, very often used. Um, the the reverb is nuts. It is a big haul. Yes, I, I agree with you. But it's crazy. <laughs> like, it's definitely too much. Uh, I think that... Because here's the thing. When you have a massive verb like that with, like, a pre-delay on it, too, we have, like, a few hits here where there's a beat 
in the action and you hear the verb and it's very at the front of the of the mix. The do both those those moments. Like it's so big. And the thing is, because it's so big, the story becomes about the hall for a second. Does that make sense? Like the the story here is probably not look at the big hall they're in, you know? In this moment, the story isn't look the big hall they're in. If there were a moment where it like panned way out and they went and you hear like a massive room, then yeah, maybe that makes sense to pull the verb like way up in the mix at that point. Uh, I could get behind that for sure. But in this moment, this is the focus. Like this is a fun piece to redesign because it's just like action, action all on the camera, right? Uh, yeah, I could pull, I'd pull your verb down like a bunch, like 60 B at least probably. Um, that's a nitpick though. Otherwise this piece is, piece is great. And like your character focus is great. It it already is focused. Just your verb is so fucking loud. <laughs> it's so loud, Edward. <laughs> like I was I was laughing internally the first time I watched it. I was like, oh man. Because the thing is, like, I'm guilty of that too, of course. I mean, who doesn't like reverb, right? You you put it on, you're like, oh yeah, it's so rich, so juicy, so much sauce. And then uh it's common to like come back from lunch or like come back to your desk the next day and be like, oh my god, there's so much reverb. So yeah, it's uh it just, when you have that much verb, it's not that it's like taking away from the story, that is part of it, but you just risk like masking other details you have going on, right? And just washing out the clarity and contour of the mix, of the sound design you've done otherwise. Yeah, like I, I, even now, like I want to hear more details my my ear keeps being pulled away to the reverb it just keeps happening it's not even like because i'm just I'm not, I'm not being like funny or dramatic here like it's just true like right right here ching ching i just keep hearing the verb only so it's, it's unfortunate because you're it's doing a disservice to the entire like all the hard work you put in you know it's just like one fader is too high that's it Yeah, like right there. So it it probably, I mean, this is definitely an effect that has in general, but for you, it's you know debatable. Um, when you crank the verb on something early in design, it tends to have an effect of filling these gaps in, in the story, in the sound design, like in the entire kind of timeline of the piece. And then it tricks your brain into thinking the mix is complete because you're like, oh, there's sound everywhere from start to finish. But I think if you were to kill the verb track and listen to it again, you might find some spots where you're like, oh, I should probably add some detail there. Like there's a spot where uh, where this character is kind of being pushed back and, and the, the back foot's holding place and it's sliding back, right? This, this clip here, when the camera changes, like that's kind of an important moment. Like the, the, the feet are the closest thing to the camera here when it happens, I'll go frame by frame. Um, like this right here, camera shift, and we're, we're still, still coming back, you know? It moves like a full foot still. Uh, this, this moment is not really heard, I don't think. It's just still the shh, still, but the idea of having a little more depth on that, on that, you know, regaining your footing and pushing off, would be nice, but it's just like, it's verb, right? <sighs> we just have that only. Uh, again, like it's a, it's a small nitpick that has a lot of uh, effect on the full, the full piece, unfortunately. Yeah, I didn't love this impact sound right here. Like that to me sounded more like one of these stone pillars being blasted apart or something. As opposed to, you know, metal being sliced off. The result, 
the ding, 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 ding is, of course, accurate. But yeah, the impact just sounded like that classic stone impact that I've heard many times. Um, and it did distract me in the end. Again, small nitpick. And also because I work in sound and I've heard that sound before. So. <laughs> Classic, classic. We're gonna go to nothing and have a big impact. Very nice. Um, pretty cool. Uh, I do, I do think um, glass and some other punchy elements. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I, I definitely got stone out of it. So I don't know. Might be worth just looking again. Because the thing is, the the bouncing blade afterwards is all metal, right? So the idea that it sounds like something that isn't metal on the impact is maybe uh, a bit unfocused. Yeah. Um, this slide is cool. I think that it could tell a, a more detailed story over time. Yeah, so eyes closed. Uh, just one time, listen through it. Here we go. So... When I'm listening to that, I don't feel like I heard the character get closer to the camera. And there is a bit of like forward and back. Um, it might be worth, this is a cool clip by the way. I haven't, I haven't seen this redesign before. Uh, this might be worth having a little more clarity and and like specificity in you know, the the foreground here, because we're not hearing general body sliding, we're hearing like the head, right? It's like, this is the big story right here in front of us. And we're hearing some of that, but like, look at this, this, you know, front of the helmet, it's like, you know, it's got a lot of contact with the ground, a whole lot. And we're hearing kind of general body metal rock sliding. Uh, I think what you've got there could all stay in the final mix for sure. It's great. Just a matter of maybe adding in a bit more kind of proximity effect, metal, like hard, you know, sliding just to show that the, the closeness to the camera, the head's like this big, right? It's huge on the screen. So having a little more, a little more love in that might be nice. I mean, look how big that is in the screen right here. Look at that. It's like, it's like a quarter of the screen. And the metal sliding too, we have a very clear idea of when it stops too. Because it's not like rock that has this kind of this trickling down tail. The metal's like, and it'll stop, right? So you'll be able to really, you will be able to very accurately tell this story based on when the metal stops being heard. Yeah. Great clip. This is super good. So, uh, really the only, literally the only thing that stood out to me in this clip was this landing sound on this surface. That's it. The footsteps from here to here is the only thing that stood out as being like kind of out of place. Um, so that's awesome. I mean, nice work. They just felt like they were in a room, you know, they, I didn't feel like I was outside or like it, it seems open air to me, right? It's pretty big. I have windows and stuff. Uh, Super good. Um, the that mind you, that's that's first time through watching it. Watching it again, we can for sure nitpick further. So uh, here we go. Let's do it. Let's nitpick, shall we? I think. I mean, a you've picked a very active clip to design. We don't hear a ton of what's happening besides like the main character. We hear you know the enemies and such, like this little friend, right? Um, runs towards us. We don't really hear any menace there, and that's a great example of using some sound to inform player behavior. Like, uh-oh, there's an enemy coming this way, right? I'm playing Destiny 2 a lot right now. I'm, here. I'm reacting to enemy sounds all the time. It's very frequent. Every, every time it happens, I'm like, good job, sound team. Thanks a lot. You helped me survive. And like these jumps and stuff, the... Uh, the even the weapon fire. Yep, 
Yeah, like that weapon fire is it's important to hear because again, we're we're informing player behavior. We're saying, hey, look out, there is a threat. And hearing the enemies a little more would be awesome. Basically, everything you've designed here, minus like a few footsteps that seem kind of roomy, is solid. It's really good. The gunfire is is sh shippable for sure. I mean, it's. <laughs> Yeah, it feels good. We talked about this a little bit. Um, yeah, like this is... Oh, I keep going back and forth. I'm like, what do you even need this clip in here? This action RPG thing. Because you don't talk about this elsewhere, do you? Is there a reason for that? You don't have it here. So you have it there. Is it just old enough that you're not really showing it off? But it's kind of different, so you want to just mention it? Because it might even be worth having this just like as another thing down below. Yeah, as a, oh, by the way, also I did this thing. It's pretty cool. What do you think? You know? Because, um, yeah, otherwise we have the things you designed are here, right? But the RPG is not. So I think if you had the RPG here also, just as a, you know, people, I think right now it's safe to say that people would be interested after watching your reel and they'd probably scroll down. So we'll, we'll assume that's the case. We're now scrolling down as a person who's interested and we see, okay, cool. We saw these. Yeah, it sounds good. Uh, wow, it's two minutes long. Sweet. They did the whole thing. This one's two minutes long. Cool. And then we, they might watch those. Who knows? Let's scroll down some more. We see the all caps wise <laughs> into rally racing and C16. And then perhaps you see one third, a third thing here. It's like, oh, and also this, right? It's the kind of thing where you can assume, just like Josh's stuff, uh, it, you can assume that people probably won't watch everything, but just having a bunch of things is an effective kind of shotgun strategy. It's like, it makes it very clear you're serious, right? So yeah, I'd, I'd recommend that, sure. Uh, I don't know that you even need the the this clip in here because this City 16 is, A, it looks very good. Like it looks nice. So people would be more interested in taking a further look at this compared to this one, which looks uh, looks a little more kind of like classic demo game. Does that make sense? Yeah, I've seen a lot of like RPG demo things in Unity or elsewhere, and they look kind of the same, like a little bit generic health and health potion, health and mana, you know, this kind of stuff. Text on screen, whereas this one just is more visually compelling. Uh, okay, so that's kind of all I want to say. Like, nice nice work, Edward, honestly. Really solid. Uh, you made some really good choices design-wise. Just having some more... I mean, this clip tells us nothing about your aptitude for, like, designing outside the frame because there's nothing outside the frame in this clip. There is a big hall, and I guess you, it's safe to say you designed that one pretty good. <laughs> but but uh, these next clips... Um, again, the second clip is very, like right in front of your face so it's not much happening outside the clip either and then the third clip though is where you kind of show your your hand a bit as far as things outside the main focus are not super designed so that's probably what you want to design a little more yeah there's like a lot of really good design here but the thing is if you were to if you were to mute the player sounds right now I think you'd find that there's a lot here that you could be digging in on a lot. Um, yeah, but again, what you've designed sounds awesome. So nice work. Okay, uh, standing out. Yes, absolutely. I don't. I. It's not without its faults, but like, hell yeah, nice work. Really, really, really solid. Uh, Bradley, shall we? We shall. Bradley Gerwin, we got a uh, vertical page again? No, it is horizontal. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, Sean, 100%, right? Like the the first time, I want to, one second, Bradley, my last note, I want to just, I did say it, but I want to reiterate. Um, my first time watching this clip through, I was like, that sounded sweet. You know, that was just my, my basic reaction and then on next 
watched through, I was like, okay, there's like a lot of stuff missing actually. So if you were to add those things in, I mean, holy crap, it'd be so, so good. <laughs> the, the reaction at that point would be like, let's hire this person. Uh, really, really good. Yeah. Um, okay. <clears throat> so Bradley, here we are. Uh, hi, this is a, a little small too, perhaps a little bigger. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Bradley. I'm a sound designer, composer, and game audio integration specialist. I work across a few different mediums, but it always comes back to the same thing. I'm obsessed with interactive audio, world building, the player journey, and middleware SDK as a tool for endless immersion possibilities. A Michigan native, I've been playing games for as long as I can remember, though I think the first game I officially owned was Pokemon Emerald for the Game Boy Advance. I, re I, remember, I remember teaching myself the Little Root Town theme on piano as well as constantly annoying my mom by imi imitating Pokemon cries in the car. Classic childhood move, especially on long road trips. Not to worry, she's since forgiven me. Okay, fine. <laughs> These days, I'm most excited by games that are both 3D and narrative driven. I love bringing audio assets to life in a living, acoustically convincing environment that a player can explore in either first or third person. I'm also dedicated to the ongoing exploration of new tools and workflows to help unblock the biggest challenges of sound, sorry, biggest challenges sound designers face during development, ensuring the delivery of, that's a long sentence, ensuring the delivery of high quality innovative assets that can be iterated upon smoothly. Okay, wow. I'm currently working on an action adventure FPS inspired by Greek mythology with Wolverine Soft. Ah, yeah, I saw that, of course. And I hope your and I hope your project is next. Cute. Bonus fun facts: uh, animals, hikes, field recording, cooking, baking, uh, books. Wonderful. God of War, Control, and Animal Crossing. Those are very different games. I mean, Animal Crossing at least, at least but sure. Uh, okay, cool. <clears throat> what up, Lewis? Plays guitar. Is he a Buck Evans? Jordan Payne. All these people in the chat. Thank you for all those claps. Cheers. Uh, okay, so. Um, slightly jokey. Sure. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It's fine. Um, this is not quite get past the... Uh, my, my threshold for jokes. It's probably still within the threshold. <laughs> it's, not, it's not too ridiculous. Uh, this... Section, like, I'm also dedicated, I'm going to read it again. I'm also dedicated to the ongoing exploration of new tools and workflows to help unblock the biggest challenges sound designers face during development, ensuring the devel delivery of high-quality innovative assets that can be iterated upon smoothly. This feels like really uh, generic salesy, to be honest. And you probably don't even need it at all. I mean, it's it's like... <clears throat> It's the classic feedback of is everything in your in your bio specific to you, you know? And this is kind of like this feels like it could appear on anyone's page. That's all. Uh whereas things like this, like what you're doing, yeah, I want to hear about that, sure. And like you want to hear you want to do these things like 3D and narrative stuff specifically? Cool. That's awesome too. Um But yeah, like this section here is kind of a little more generic. So up to you, of course. All this stuff's up to you. Whether you want to change it or not, but that's kind of my first impression is this sentence. I was like, oh, okay, like settle down, Bradley, <laughs> you know, settle down. <clears throat> uh, okay. Um, Sergio, am I able to enjoy some spring here in Vancouver? Ah, uh, yeah. I was walking around uh, the dog park the other day. Took a bike ride in the morning up Commercial Drive. It was awesome. Super nice. Look at the sun. You see it out there? Holy portal to the outside so nice uh okay let's um let's browse blog google sheets to jira and wise objects i haven't seen a blog for a while actually uh when was this made let's see undated <laughs> foiled my plans are foiled okay well 
Cool. All right. Uh, music. Experimental electronic works. Some game scores, film scores. Um, Twitter. Does it work? It works. Wonderful. And contact. Oh, God. It's a mail to link. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it so much. I'm sorry. I. What's this? Oh, okay. Classic. And search bar. That's so weird, too. Uh, I see the, the, the search bar thing comes up occasionally. It just feels very template-y, you know, because no one needs to search your page. If your page is long enough that people need to, need to search your page, it's probably too long. So uh, back to the portfolio. Uh, okay, we got the sound design reel here, which is how long? A minute and six. Very nice. We got... Uh, various other things. Oh, so your, your demo reel has a description. So three redesigns from games I admire, plus a technical sound design snippet from a game I worked on called Circuitry. Cool. And here it is. Uh, why is in Unity? We got a uh, gameplay demo of Circuitry also. Cool. Um, technical audio director, team size 45. Okay, cool. And 10 in audio. That's nuts. And 45 and 10 is audio? What the heck? That's crazy. That's a massive team for 45 people. Uh, I don't know. I mean, my my side says zero drop frames during that whole thing. I, uh, I just changed over to San Francisco rather than Seattle. So we'll see if that leads to a better result. I don't know. Very odd, though. It's never happened before. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so <laughs> how do we do on the video? Oh my god! Sorry, Bradley. I mean, are you all, gra are all glad that we uh, we turned down that partnership years ago? <laughs> no one's paying for this right now. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, so God of War clip, right? Halfway through, it was like ten seconds in, it broke again. Man. Okay. Well. Let's do it one more time. Hopefully it works. Let's see. How do we do? <laughs> do we get it? Oh my god. We got there. Thank you, Bradley. The claps were for you, not only for the video and your hard work, but also for suffering through that. It's not ideal. I can't believe it happened like right on playing the reel, too. That's crazy. Could happen any time, you know? Uh, okay, well, nice work, claps for you. Um, yeah, I was originally remarking how it's odd this video is like baseball for days, look at this. <laughs> Whereas Edwards was like, here are other things Edward did, you know, strange. Um, okay, so let's talk about this thing. Intro. I don't think I've seen a portrait in an intro before. I'm kind of against, I mean, I'm not against it. It's nice. Moving in. Also, yes, welcome everyone in who's, who I'm seeing here. We got Dale, we got uh, Settings Con, classic. Zevros, Asnerf. 
These are all great names. Anyway. I'm gonna go side chain again here. So Okay. Uh lengthwise. How do we feel about the length? I think it's probably fine. Although the ending kind of weirded me out. So I mean it's not the worst idea for branding, Bradley. I mean we have uh we we got you know, the, the, you'll see people with like business cards. You know, when when people went to things, they would hand out these thing called, things called business cards back in the day, and some had their face on it. It's kind of nice, actually. It's like, oh yeah, that person of the two hundred I met, I recall this person's face totally. So yeah, not the worst idea, sure. If it works for you. It's certainly a cheap approach to branding. I mean, your page feels very templatey, of course, right? We kind of mentioned that already with the search bar and stuff uh so yeah you're not making like a strong branding statement on your website on the whole but sure why not use your face why not submerge tapes what's up so as far as okay, here's something weird so it's is this not like <laughs> like pulled way in aspect ratio wise and we have this and then this is like can't couldn't this be zoomed in and just like pulled to the size of the of the video it's kind of one thing that weirded me out slightly and the same thing for sush it's also small and then this one gets bigger and then this one's a little bigger yet was that an intentional choice, like for black border reasons or something? Because, yeah, this down here just kind of caught me off guard because this is kind of lower third-ish, but the video isn't feeling the pain. So that's, yeah, just, just one thing. I was kind of like, that's kind of odd. So not the end of the world, obviously, not a big deal, but it's just one, it's just an example of one of those things where I'm thinking about that rather than your cool sound design, right? So it's maybe there's an argument there to be made for removing all things like that to make sure they're as focused as possible on what they're watching. Uh, but as far as your actual um, titles, I mean, more typically, like we just saw in uh, in Edward's work, you'd have the project, um, the developer, and what you did being redesign. So I'd swap these two things, right? It's probably more typical. Because uh, this God of War redesign was not by Santa Monica Studio, if that makes sense. Uh, okay, moving on. We got the same note here, same thing. Moving on. And like the year it was released isn't super important um, since it's a redesign. It's kind of whatever. One of the clips had a different pixel ratio, so you size them all down. Part of me thought it looked cool. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's, again, it's not the end of the world. Just... Kind of small. It just my my first look opinion. That's all. Uh, we got Wolverine Soft Studio circuitry. Right, big team. Uh, Roll technical sound designer. You said on your page you're also. Is this what you said actually on your bio? I thought you said something else. Um, circuitry. Where did I even read that? Was that here? Uh, no, because you linked to it. So what? Or no, I I did. Let me just read it again. Sorry, I'm skipping around too much. Um, right. I feel like I'm blind. What? Didn't I read this somewhere, Bradley? Tech sound design snippet. Am I totally blind? I'm sure it was there, wasn't it? Tech. No, there's nothing there. What the heck? <laughs> where, where did I read this? Here. Here it is. So it says, you were technical audio director and sound designer. But then here it says technical sound designer. Um, again, small, small thing. But just some consistency would probably be worthwhile there. Um... <clears throat> If nothing else, just to be clear, like on what you did, the 
technical audio director. This is like a student project thing you said. You did say it, right? Let me see this. Before all the nonsense. Uh, 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 uh. Student organization game. Our audio team happened to be massive for whatever reason. Okay, so right, student project. It's a little misleading because I didn't know this was a student thing. But this does look like a student thing. I'll put it that way. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, okay. So maybe it's actually something like a little more like on the amateur side. Um, not the end of the world again, but yeah, it just doesn't really help. It just doesn't help things to be misleading. Like it's fine to be a student project. Like even saying like student project beside Wolverine Studio would probably help. It would help contextualize what these devs were doing. Like 45 devs on a commercial project probably wouldn't make something like this, but 45 students makes sense. Sure. Cause everyone's just like, no, everyone's getting their, getting their, uh, their feet wet, so to speak. Uh, okay. And then presentation wise, this last, last clip, we got death stranding Kojima. Yeah. And then this ending is super weird. Bradley, very odd. Like what happened there? This is a, uh, I, I, I thought perhaps it was like a quiet finish. The first time of the three watching it, I thought it was a quiet finish that was going to like continue into like a slow fade with some ambience or something. And then it just cut hard. So yeah, for sure, do the thing at the end. Um, again, both you, Edward had, you and Edward had the same thing there. No, no end card. Uh, throw an end card, can't hurt. Just put your face on there again. Put your contact info on there again. No one's gonna care, it's fine. Um, and yeah, just this ending is a little strange. I would probably look at how you are transitioning from the Death Stranding clip to the title, the ending title card, uh, and maybe just kill off like this thing. It just confused me. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Um, all right, so let's talk about the pieces. So of course, pretty damn AAA, pretty damn AAA, as well as your your game choices control and stuff. So it seems reasonable to assume you're looking to triple A it up. Uh, content wise, let's talk about that a bit, shall we? Let's go full screen again. Yeah, cool transition there though. The kind of the, the leap to the ping. The clang, very nice. Uh, yeah, so the, 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 the thought I had watching this is the ambience is pretty unchanging, which is like, okay. This clip is very about like what's happening in front of us, but. <laughs> Yeah, the, what do I hear here is something here. I think it's a verb. Again, it's a reverb thing. It's just, I, I don't know that I agree with the reverb choices made. Like on the bite especially, it called out to me. It's like, but we're in the mountains. So we might have like a slap back, but probably not like a, right? And again, I just feel like it's doing disservice to your design because you've got this, a lot of like really detailed work in the movement and, and the materials and such. You don't really need to be filling in gaps like that to wash things out. I think that on the whole, if, you know, the things that, that border on a wash like ambience and, and reverb and stuff like that, it's, it's important to kind of like pick your moments and not just have it in there. So it, it feels like you're losing clarity, like the, the whole thing feels like it have a little more like focus from moment to moment. And I get a lot of that in the, in the death trending clip. I think it was in the opening. We'll get to that. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's, uh... I don't have, like, huge complaints. It just feels like, yeah, you could probably just... Like, the ambience here. Yeah, just in general, it's pretty non-stop, you know? It's a, it's a little bit exhausting to listen to this clip. And, yeah, same for the Death Stranding. We'll get to that. Um, it's just... I'd love to hear a little more, like, just a little more attention to actively choosing what parts are important to hear and to tell the story and and to have some some nuance as far as, like, how important these different parts are. Because it's not like some things are important and some things aren't, and that's it. It's not black and white. But right now, in general, each thing that happens is, like, it's loud, right? So we'll, we'll go here, go through here. Like the, the establishing shot, the jump, the grab, the cry, the kind of into the, the jump, the impact, the scream, the movement there even, big chomp, big impacts, big snort, you know, like everything is, is, uh, is real big. So you could probably, I mean, right here is a great example. Boom, boom. This is very menacing, right? We like a, we have a snap. It misses. Boom, boom. Probably have a little more like rock and snow in the in the in the falls too, the claws. But this moment here, it's so big on the the like the result, the consequence of the of the feet landing. But like, what's really happening there? You know. I guess it's implied like a kind of earthquake or something like that, but this is a great moment to kind of, yeah, like choose something quiet, right? Like this, this is a, I mean, it's a lot of action up to that point. The camera's flying around, right? We're following our, our hero through the whole ordeal and then we land and the camera suddenly goes and stops, right? You see that? So the camera's stopped. It's like the first time in this clip that we've had like a lock for a long time. And again, as sound designers supporting the storyline, that stoppage of the like of the cinematography is is something you can for sure dig into in your mix. Because yeah, it's like this quiet moment of boom boom. Everyone's just staring for a second, what's gonna happen, and then and we have the, the big uh inhalation, right? So yeah, this snort should for sure be heard. Absolutely. I like that. But it just feels like this snort is as important as the inhalation, which of course it's not. Of, of course not. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's the, my, my biggest point of feedback for like your, for your work in general is just dynamics. Just don't be afraid to have a little more kind of ebb and flow in loudness. And yeah, compression, totally. So the sorry, the muzzle, so it's like blue on black, hard to read for me. The muzzle, uh, all kind of sounding similar. Sounds a little too much like sloshy noise, even the roar. It's all like the same sound quality other than the swords. Yeah, it's uh, totally. It's a lot of, because things are like compressed hard and loud and there isn't a lot of like up and down and so forth, you've got a lot of, it leads to even if they aren't the same frequency range and such it, it kind of leads to things feeling samey like that's the snort is of course different like the of moving down but because they're both so so damn loud your brain's like oh geez it's just like it's just noise all the time um moving into sush let's see here oh you're you're not for video content you're, you're a uh, sound designer and master engineer cool yeah nice welcome on in <laughs> By the way, I have my side chain on because it's going through my other machine. I'll just check check sync here. It's still a little bit delayed there, but it's a little out of sync, a little late. But uh, the 
the slowdown with the high pitched thing is interesting. You kind of showed your hand a bit though, and you did the same thing over here. The other tinnitus thing, right? Uh, it's kind of solving the same problem with the same solution, or solving a problem with the same solution. Um, yeah, the... It's an option, um, but keep in mind when you have things like that, that's super tonal, and with music considerations, it might end up competing. You know, in terms of key center and stuff like that. Um, not a problem for a sound only redesign, obviously, but just that's one thing that came to mind when I heard it. Uh, and. I do like this clip on the whole to choose. You have this kind of for a longer period of time, second time around. But. Might be a little bold of a choice if it's kind of unchanging every time you're going to that mode to like slow things down and have an aim and aim and such. Um, yeah, it's it's a little bold. I mean, on the whole, this this kind of again suffers from like stuff is loud. It's not as egregious as the first clip. Uh, do we do analysis of songs too, or just video content? Well, it's not really video content actually. We're doing analysis of demo reels for games specifically. So we talk about like game sound design and game sound design, you know, philosophies and approaches and so forth. It's just that this is a video because it's like, it's a redesign of some game content. That's all. Um, this is a linear redesign, but of course in game it would be, you know, implemented to be, uh, to be heard interactively. <clears throat> um, let's, yeah. So the, let's, let's listen to this thing again from a, from a standpoint of dynamics. We're 132 right now, but I, I want to talk about this some more. So. Yeah, just the, the ambience is, is blasting. I do see the grass is moving a lot, so there is some wind here. And I do like the active ambience, but something else with it is... I think the issue I'm having is that uh, it's not just that things are loud. It's that there's like... It's really here. You know, it's, it's like right in front of us. And... If if the ambience was a little more, um, had a little more consideration for panning, and like bookending the stuff in the middle, it's uh, I think the yeah what Josh is saying I think like the upfrontness of the ambience would be okay, and I like that I I do think it's accurate, and I I I, I in terms of what we're hearing it sounds right, and I think that the space playing a big part of this story is I think accurate like it's appropriate because you're playing in this like environment and the environment is affecting your it's it's having a it's playing a role in the story being told right um but because everything's so in the middle it's like everything's stacking up and it's just ending up you know we're lacking spatiality and depth like Josh is saying Like I'm trying to hear my, my left and right now, and it's very, uh, it's very rarely over there, you know? There's like a whoosh that happens right here. Right there, we hear it on the left, but like, otherwise, it's, it almost seems odd because the whoosh is like outside of the stereo width you've chosen for the rest of the piece. So it doesn't feel like things are living in the same environment. That, that's the issue here. Uh, there's ways to make stuff sound behind or in front for a headphones user. Yeah, well, binaural stuff is a consideration. I wouldn't recommend doing like binaural audio for, for you know, gameplay stuff. I and mean, certainly, it's a it's a thing like 3D audio and so forth. But, uh, but in general, um, yeah, just more. I, I would widen your stereo width and consider more of like where you're putting things specifically. If action is filling the middle, then we need to have room for it. Of course, if you put everything else in the middle, then things stack up and sound all, all washed out, right? Uh, okay, so moving on, though, we don't super need to talk about circuitry. I do like you're showing your working in Ys and stuff. Good for you. Same, same thing as Edward, right? Just show you're your using the tools. 
Um, was this made with sound libraries or made SFX? Made SFX? Well, depends how you define making SFX because you can record your own stuff or you can use VST instruments or your own voice or or whatever. You can manipulate other content you have, something. Um, but yeah, pulling stuff from sound libraries is certainly not um, a no-no. <laughs> it's not taboo. Uh, it's, a, it's very frequently what I do for my job, but the main thing is it's not common that in my experience at least that you'd find a sound in a library that you just go like, oh, drag and drop and it's done right typically you would be doing some level of uh, signal processing or manipulation just to make something to carve something and sculpt it to be a little more specifically suited for a given purpose yeah it's not very often you drag and drop and it's good enough Yeah, it, I mean the game sounds super studenty to be honest. It's it's like, uh, I mean it's a student project. <laughs> so I mean, what do you what do you, what else is there? Uh, it's the main thing here is saying yeah, like here's a thing that we're working on and uh, we're stoked on it. It's like it's a work in progress and here it is. Here's the role I played. Here here I am working in Wise. Cool, good enough. <laughs> Moving on. And again, we have a really narrow stereo field here there's some things left and right there's some yeah there's just so much going on here like i don't super know um i don't super know what's going on to be honest uh, i think that there is something to be said here for uh, being a little more accurate uh, or, or active, Bradley, as far as like your your approach to designing a piece and saying what is the focus, you know, like the, the dynamics thing. But in this case, there's just so much sound here, you know. Uh, again, it's, it's the, the classic recommendation of close your eyes and listen to your work and see if you can tell what's happening. Because this is... There's just so much, right? And, and it's all loud. So if we have... It, it might be that all the things you've designed have a home here. Uh, like Muzzle's saying, um, I, don't, I don't like making too many like specific DB recommendations. It's more kind of like a philosophical approach to the thing. Like, what do you want to accomplish with this piece? And in, in this piece, if the story being told is... X happens, then Y, then Z. In the background, A, B, and C are happening. Um, then sure, design A, B, and C, but they're not the focus of the story, right? They're like, it's, it's just part of it. It's part of a larger whole. Whereas X, Y, and Z are important to have at the front. Like, do we want to hear this, right? Like these little, boom, little splash, little splash, little splash. Right, but there's so much happening in this mix. There's like some musical, like, um, yeah. It just ends up being, uh, uh, really kind of washed out, and there's an absence of clarity. So it just, the 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 role of a sound designer supporting the story is just not being fulfilled because we just don't know what's happening with the story from the sound. Right? Yeah. Um, the splashes sound like thunder. Yeah, Edward. So I'm not even sure if that sound is the splashes. That's my. That's my thought. Because there is like some thunder in the sky. So I don't know if that is, if the thunder we're hearing, the, the kind of crashes, if that is thunder or if it is like something else kind of stylistic. And if it's stylistic, then cool. But we should just be a little more clear that it's stylistic. That's all. And right there too, we have we have this moment into the away. So the mo this moment, so we're super close. We have a lot of beef in the engine and so forth here. And then as it goes away, boom, we tell that story. We pull out the proximity effect, pull out the bass, have it you know go into the distance. Uh, there is maybe you can break bring the ambience more into the space at that point because now the now the character is farther away in the shot. But in this shot, like nothing, it still it just remains loud, right?
and then it still is loud here. So it's kind of a, uh, it's, it's the same symptoms as over here. There, we just have this kind of nonstop approach, and I totally get it because like I I did the same thing when I was uh, a, a younger <laughs> sound designer, where you're like I got all these things, I'm gonna design all of them, and then when you listen to it in its like in its complete form once you finish the project, then yeah, of course you had you had previously a silent thing, and now you have this thing that's like this this whole like sonic experience from start to finish. So it sounds like it sounds really full and like energetic and impressive. And like, you're right compared to silence. It is absolutely energetic and, and full of sound and so forth. But when it comes to kind of moving past that into a more mature, like into maturing your approach to sound design for a piece like this, then yeah, you just need to start making a little more, uh, a, a few more active decisions about what is actually important and helping guide the viewer the listener the viewer helping guide the, the player guide uh the the person's attention from moment to moment like what's the most important thing right now and bring that to the front and then if something's coming up soon that, that's gonna like gonna require their attention maybe you start fading in early and like kind of just help guide their attention this way now that's the same thing as we were saying with like the ratchet and clank thing the enemy sound appears over here and the player goes oh what's that that's guiding their attention even though it's not linear and in terms of like a linear mix, we're still helping to bring that thing in the mix so that the player goes, oh, that's that. And the attention has been guided. That's the point. So for this one, it's not like we're we're not informing player behavior. It is a linear piece, but it's still very important. It's the same philosophy. You still want to be pulling, um, you know, saying this is important. Now this is important. You know, this is a it's not just the bike for this clip. It's like during this this only not the full clip but like this camera when the camera is here right what's important right now probably the bike spinning up a little bit of that and like the fleeing and these things at the front we like frame by frame here we have these splashes are they footsteps are they are they raindrops like what is this for someone coming in completely blind right what are these things and we have this now is the most important thing is look where this is center of the screen it's covering our hero right and then we have a little more of that. It's getting close. Uh-oh. Danger is approaching. And we hear... And it's gone. Right? This is all the same camera cut. And now this is absolutely the biggest story. We're getting away just in time. And we're flying away now. And the story is now... What they're leaving behind. Perhaps this still, right? As opposed to still the bike. Does that all make sense? Like this is just... This is a single cut... But what's important is changing over the course of that cut. And the thing is, this is your choice. This is this is your choice to make. It's not like someone, I mean, well, maybe someone will come in if you have a creative director who is deciding what the, what the shots are um, or what, what the shots are to take. But this is your choice to say what is important right now. And and the the really interesting and special sound design of the world ends up making some really cool choices in terms of saying what's important right now. Because yeah, you could say that this in this shot right now, uh, maybe this thing being left behind, being like angry or something is an option. You could say maybe there's some, some wildlife around me. We hear the, like the, the, some, some water crashing on the rocks by the shoreline. Uh, there's like all these choices for you to make. And there probably are some really bizarre and wrong choices, but there's the, the right choice. Isn't like one thing every time. It's really up to you to decide kind of what, what your creativity is going to, going to pull forth. So, um, let's just finish this one out. Yeah, so the ending is weird, of course, but we don't want that. The, uh... Oh, I didn't realize. This is... They're right there. I didn't even see that for all the first clips, or for the first times we watched this thing. Just saw it right now. And swerve. Okay, well. <laughs> Let's ignore the very ending. That's fine. We'll ignore this and assume it ends there. So, yeah, again, just dynamics, storytelling, it's all that stuff. We talk about that a lot on Real Talk. It's a big part of our jobs. Um, uh, a Cortez, a Cortez, a Cortez music, perhaps it is. I'm entering in all this SFX world, and this is being so useful and educational. Awesome, happy to help. Happy to, of course. Uh, okay, awesome, awesome. So, if this goes for both Edward and Bradley, if you have any more.
questions about the stream or anything we, we covered, feel free to follow up on Twitter or email or whatever. And I'll be happy to, to get to that when I have time. And I know there's some submissions I haven't gotten to yet that are in our, our message requests and stuff. I got to schedule those. I think our next, our next date's like June 24th, something like that. It's a bit of a wait right now, but I will deal with those soon. And if you, if you're yourself, if you want to submit your own work to real talk, then feel free to email uh, via our website contact inquiry form, or you can use Twitter at power up audio or at regami K. That's me. I'll see it either way. Either one's fine. And, Oh, I totally skipped over the distinction. So I think the, uh, Bradley distinction wise, I don't know just due to kind of the, the templatiness of your site and the, the kind of nonstop exhaust exhaustion approach or, or not approach, but consequence of how you've done that dynamics. I think the this is like a really good start. You made it very clear what you want to do. It's clear that you're you're putting the work in. You're doing the the stuff on the side. Um, these are all very positive things, and this is a great example of something that'd be like a good kind of first application. I don't know that you'd be hired with your current um, portfolio and such, but if you applied again in six months and you've improved on things like dynamics and stereo width and panorama and all these things. Um, I mean, that's going to look very good, right? If you have, if you have all this content and it's like suddenly, uh, you know, if, if leaps and bounds have been made and you've, and you've improved greatly without someone at a studio telling you how to do it, then that, that looks very good because suddenly that says, Oh, this person can learn on their own and can improve on their own and has self, you know, is like self driven and obviously has a passion for this stuff is invested. They're serious then they can assume that you are a good investment and perhaps you're worth hiring after all, right? So yeah, can't possibly hurt. Nice work. Okay, uh, I'm gonna call it there. We ran a bit long due to the Twitch issues. I didn't want to cut you short due to Twitch being weird, but I'm glad it was behaving for the rest of the stream, at least. <laughs> I'm glad we had that. <clears throat> okay, let's go back to some tooth and tail Austin Winchery. Let's do it. I want to press uh i don't know how about how about fuel of the firebrand you know what no down here instead darren corb so this piece actually um i think it's this one is it this one or is it digital feast oh i can't recall now It wasn't this piece, but this piece is awesome, so who cares? <laughs> we'll leave it in. Done. Play it out. Thanks, Darren. Darren Corb, of course, of Supergiant Game. Games, uh, Hades, Pyre, Fashion, Transistor, all that good stuff. Killed it. Uh, I will call it there, and we'll let Darren play us out. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in two weeks. Cheers.